Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. The overload protector is a critical part of the compressor circuit. It protects the motor from high currents and high temperatures. If the overload protector fails, then the compressor will not start. In this episode, first we'll learn how it all works. Then we'll do some tests with a multimeter. Finally, I'll show you how to install a new overload protector. Now, if you want a complete guide on how to test all the start components, then you can watch our compressor troubleshooting guide. The video is linked in the description below. All refrigerators work in the same basic way. When cooling is needed, the cold control sends power to the cooling circuit. The compressor pushes the refrigerant through the system. In the freezer, heat is extracted by the evaporator coils and is released through the condenser coils behind the refrigerator. This process continues until the set temperature is reached. The compressor uses a single phase motor. It has a start winding and a run winding, which are both connected to a common terminal. Attached is an overload protector that disconnects power if the current or temperature gets too high. Single phase motors use resistance or a capacitor to create a phase shift in the start winding. This rotating magnetic field creates the torque needed to start the motor. Many refrigerators use a relay with a PTC thermistor. This heat-sensitive resistor acts like a switch. As the motor starts, the thermistor heats up and disconnects power to the start winding. This prevents it from overheating. Other models also use a run capacitor to help increase the efficiency. This run capacitor allows the start winding to stay energized as the motor runs. Older fridges might use a start capacitor, which is taken out of the circuit by the relay shortly after startup. Keep in mind that these are the most common components, but there are other setups as well. This includes current sensing relays or combination relays and kits. Regardless of the model, a faulty motor winding, a bad overload, relay or capacitor can all prevent the compressor from starting. Using a multimeter, components can be tested for continuity. A continuity test will determine if there's a continuous path for electricity to flow through. Without continuity, the component will not work and will need to be replaced. To begin, you might need a screwdriver or nut driver and a multimeter. Keep in mind there is some variation between models and not all refrigerators will have the same parts. You can enter your model number on the Amory Supply website to see a parts breakdown. This can be helpful to show you which parts are in your refrigerator and where they are located. First, slide the refrigerator out from the wall. When there is enough room, unplug the cord to disconnect the power. In some models, you might need to remove the water supply line to gain access to the back. Close the shutoff valve to turn off the water supply. Next, use an adjustable wrench to loosen and remove the supply line. Let any remaining water drain into a plastic container. Now, slide the fridge all the way out so you have plenty of room to work. On the back of the refrigerator is an access panel. Use a one quarter inch nut driver to remove the screws. Now simply lift up to remove the panel. When accessing the compressor components, it's best to wear cut-resistant gloves. 
In some models, you'll have to remove a cover. The capacitor stores and releases an electrical charge. So be careful of any exposed terminals as it can still give a shock. Before anything else, use a high ohm resistor or a screwdriver with an insulated handle. Touch between the two terminals to release any stored energy inside the capacitor. Now take a picture of the wires for reference. Next, remove the start relay and capacitor. Now disconnect the wires. In other models, the capacitor will be mounted directly on the relay. In this case, you'll have to remove the retaining clip. Next, remove the capacitor and relay. Now, separate the capacitor from the relay. Finally, discharge the capacitor. The overload protector is connected to the common terminal on the compressor. Depending on the model, it will either be a separate component or will be built into the relay. In any case, it's best to test for continuity. Set your multimeter to the ohms or resistance setting. Now touch the probes to each terminal. You should get a reading between 0 and 1 ohm. This is continuity. If you have a combination starter, then test between the top two terminals. If there's no continuity or if the resistance is significantly off, then the overload protector has failed and will need to be replaced. Now, if you have a combination relay, then you'll have to replace the entire part. If your capacitor is separate from the start relay, then connect it to the two terminals. Now reconnect the wires. If needed, align the relay and overload protector. If your capacitor attaches to the combination relay, then align the mounting pin and push it into place. Next, align the relay and attach it to the compressor. Now attach the retaining clip. Finally, reconnect the wires. Align the back panel onto the mounting tabs. Now tighten the screws. Reconnect the water supply and tighten the connection. Open the shutoff valve. Plug in the cord to reconnect the power. Now slide it back into place. Make sure to leave a couple of inches of space between the refrigerator and the wall. This will allow for proper airflow. Now test the refrigerator to see if it's working properly. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an Amory location to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.